today's gonna be a pretty cool video. I've just been fascinated by this and wanting to try it for a while. We're gonna do ballistics gel testing, but not at the typical 1500 yards. We're doing this at 500 yards and further. So I just wanna know what the bullet expansion and the wound channel really looks like at that extreme kind of distances. And we're doing today's tests with the 6.5 Creedmoor and the 6.5 PRC with the same shot. I'll show you today. All right, we've got the target set up at 100 yards. And I'm just gonna check my zero because obviously if I'm off even a tiny bit at close range, at the far distance, we won't stand a chance. I'm shooting the SIG Cross today. This is chambered in 6.5 Creedmoor. Now, the reason in the intro that I said we're testing 6.5 Creedmoor and 6.5 PRC with one shot is obviously they shoot the exact same bullets, 6.5 millimeters, same weight, everything. But the 6.5 PRC is just going to shoot this about 200 feet per second faster. And so if we shoot this with 6.5 Creedmoor at, say, 500 yards, we just see, need to see where the 6.5 PRC would drop to that same speed. And we know what the 6.5 PRC would do with the exact same ELDX bullet. I picked this bullet because it's supposed to expand out to very slow speeds and we're obviously shooting pretty long range. So let's give it a shot. Yeah, I did. Okay, that's not good. <laughs> There's nothing on the target. I bet I made that age old mistake. So this is the second day that I've come out here trying to film this video. It is really hard to make a shot like this, hit it perfect in the ballistics gel and get it all on video because it's so hot that the cameras keep dying and they'll make the shot go, go up there and the camera died because it overheated. Anyway, so it's day two. I bet I shot over this target every time because I think I forgot to zero out my scope after. Oh, and look at that. See that dirt back there? I missed the target and hit it right here with all three shots. All right, check this scope. Yep. I was shooting at 10 MOA. <laughs> That's not gonna work. All right, I was gonna measure how far apart they are, but they're just touching right there. And we are 0.65 inches high and a tiny bit to the right. So I think I'm just gonna go ahead and make that correction to my scope and move on because this gun is just shooting so accurate that I just I don't think I need a whole lot of verification shots. This is 200 yards now. I just checked the Hornady Ballistics app and it says I should be 1.5 MOA up and then maybe one click into the wind. We'll see about that. But that's if I have my velocity correct. A lot of people worry if you don't have a chronometer about being able to shoot long range. It's certainly helpful. I use mine all the time. But when you don't know, if you shoot a group at 100 and then you shoot a group at 300, you can pretty easily tell how fast that bullet's going just by how much it drops. And so that's kind of what we're doing here is just kind of redneck ballistics. We took our first two shots. They were a little high, but touching. So I zeroed the scope. Then without adjusting the scope for the distance, I took these shots at 200. So that's how much 6.5 Creedmoor drops at 200 yards. This is 3.7 inches. So 1.8 MOA was my adjustment at 200 yards. Now we're gonna try this at 300 yards. We're gonna live on the wild side here. We're gonna take a 300 yard shot with a $2,000 plus dollar camera just a few inches from the target. Hopefully we don't miss. But I want some realistic, you know? Let's get a good shot. <laughs> I didn't think about it hitting the camera. It's because you didn't realize that I could miss. Oh, that's right. You are pretty good, honey. All right, this is the Hornady Ford Off app. 
I've selected my profile for the SIG Cross. And so at 300 yards, it told me I should be at 3.95 MOA. That ended up not being enough correction. So what that means is my velocity was not correct. That's why I said you don't really need to have a chronometer. Now we can just go down, let's say we drop this down to 2600. And that would have said at 300 yards, my come up was 4.26 MOA. That sounds more realistic, and so we're set now. It's not perfect at all. It'd be better to get the exact number with the chronometer, but we're at least in the ballpark. Well, that was quite the walk. Yeah. 600 yards is far. Ballistics gel set up. We're obviously aiming for this clear one here. I'm gonna turn this around. Right there, see if we can do it. Oh wow, it is just like a tiny dot in my scope. Okay, I'm up 14 and a half MOA. I'm gonna just hold about three quarter MOA wind. I don't have a level on this gun. I really should put one on. I hope you get it. We'll probably hear it if it hits it. It's like hitting an animal. Boom, heard it. Perfect. Nuh uh. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna put two more into it just for good measure. I think I missed. Dang it. And let's go see what that looks like. This shaky video is us running to the camera to turn it off before it overheats so we don't lose it like yesterday. Did we get it? Yes, footage is on there. Okay, let's see what this looks like. All right, it definitely doesn't have the visible reaction that it does when you shoot ballistic gel up close. You know, it doesn't fly the gel off the table, but it looks like it's getting pretty good penetration. Oh, we got the gel though. Yes. Okay. Let's see what happened. Whoa, hit it three times. I thought we missed. All three shots hit. And all three exited. Unbelievable. Okay, so pretty wild. I thought I'm, I missed the first shot, but actually all three hit this small gel block at 600 yards. That is dang far. All three of them hit within a couple inches of each other. I'll give you this kind of close-up footage so you can see what happens. So they enter in here. You can see right there some like red little dots. That little red dot is from the little plastic polymer tip on the front. Awesome expansion all the way through this 20 inch gel block. And then we see a little jacket right here where the jacket kind of separated on one of them. But I am amazed all three shots completely penetrated that ballistic gel block. I am, I'm, that's shocking. The reason that I say that that's so surprising to get that much penetration is people knock the ELDX for not being a tough enough bullet. That it, yeah, it expands, but it's not very tough. And so I did a different, different ballistic gel test at 50 yards with an inch of wood in front of the ballistic gel. And the ELDX performed really well, even on that, like if, if penetration is gonna be an issue, you know, smack in the wood um, at close range, high velocity, and the bullet performed well. Then now at 600 yards, I mean, look, how, how thick is a white tail? How thick is a gem, right? Like this thing, that is a lot of penetration. I don't know, I, I am really impressed. So now the cool thing is, we look at this at 600 yards. I'm gonna do the math and put the number here. This would be the identical result you would get in a 6.5 PRC at whatever yards that is, because it's shooting 200 feet per second faster. And so, man, I, I really, I like the 6.5 Creedmoor for smaller mid-size game, deer, antelope, everything like that. I don't know about it for the large game, except honestly, 
That's a tough result to argue with at 600 yards to get a full block of penetration. Your face look right now looks so happy. It is like nerd <laughs> heaven, man. This is so cool. All right. Thanks for everybody joining me on this week in Backfire. We'll see you in the next video.